I have been in love with animation ever since I was a kid. There's just something about the ability it has to transport you to vast different worlds, have you crying in one scene and laughing in the next. All in the span of a 90 minute runtime. This is one of the most magical things I think we can all experience in our lifetimes. But it wasn't always like this. Back in 1907, the first animation was brought to life by a French comic artist. And you can see just how rudimentary this was. Fast forward to today, and we are spoiled for choice on mind-blowing, beautiful animation. But how do we go from this to this? Enter the graph editor. This tool is foundational in modern age animation. It's been built and compounded upon throughout the years, and it's what allows for the kind of animations you see on the silver screen, and of course, video games. When you boil it down, this whole tool is essentially a way to edit a simple line with limitless possibilities. So in this video, I'll be showcasing the power of the graph editor, how to use it, and a few tricks you probably didn't know. In Blender, I have a very simple animation here of a cube moving forward. I'll drag open another window and press Shift plus F6 to switch to the graph editor. And you can see we have a total of two keyframes and also, oh my God, there's so much stuff here. How do we use this thing? Don't worry, let's cover some quick hotkeys. First off, all the normal navigation and selection hotkeys like rotation, scale, and all that stuff works in the graph editor. Next, I'm not sure many people know this or are even taught what the graph editor actually is. It's a 2D version of what's happening in the 3D space. Okay, see, I have a cube here on the X axis. It's going from the value of negative one to positive one in the 3D space. This is then translated into a 2D form as a simple line. And you can see the value of negative one is shown here. And this translates all the way up to the value of positive one over the course of 24 frames. This is something that might be a little bit hard to grasp, but it's the foundation of how you actually read the graph editor. Before we can get to editing our splines and animating them, we first need to know how to select them. I mean, look at this mess. The first thing we can do is, let's say I want to single out a specific axis and only work on that one. Well, I can come here to the outliner, select the axis I want, and press Shift plus H. This will hide every other channel that isn't selected. If you want to bring it all back, you can press Alt-H and you're good to go. You should probably know what interpolation is if you're even remotely interested in animation. So as you can see, we currently have a linear interpolation. Blender is essentially making a bunch of in-between frames or splining the movement from keyframe A to keyframe B in a linear fashion. But we can change this interpolation and get a bunch of different variations in a matter of seconds. First, select your keyframes and press T. This opens the interpolation window, and you can see we have all these awesome functions. We'll get to the fun stuff in a sec, but let's focus on the three main interpolations. We have constant, linear, and bezier. Constant is what we use when we're blocking our animations. This allows us to set up our timing and spacing. As you can see, the absolute value of the keyframe is being snapped to once the playhead reaches it, meaning there's no interpolation, no splining, nothing. Linear is the exact opposite of this, and we literally just explained it before. <laughs> and lastly, Bezier is where the fun begins. This allows us to start editing the spline and creating awesome curves and patterns that drastically change our animation. So let's do that. With my two keyframes here, I can create an insane amount of detail and character in my animation just by altering the handlebars. Okay, well, What's a handlebar? First, change your keys to Bezier, and you can see we now have three transform points on the keyframe. There's the keyframe itself and two handlebars. We can move these handlebars independently and make some really cool curves and animation. But there's a problem. If we have another keyframe like this and try to edit one handlebar, you'll see it's automatically adjusting for the changes on the other side. What if we just want to edit one side? Well, this is where handle types come in. You can access them by selecting your keyframe and pressing V. This will give you the handle types menu. And there's a few here, so let's cover them quickly. By default, it'll be on automatic clamped, which automatically chooses the handle positions to make a smooth curve on both sides. This is also clamped, meaning the curve will not overshoot your keyframe's value. Automatic is exactly the same, except it doesn't clamp the curve. 
so they can overshoot the keyframes value, which makes for some really cool animations. Vector will create automatic linear interpolation between two keyframes. It doesn't affect the other keyframes handle types, so this is a really handy way to make a really quick bouncing ball animation. Aligned will essentially lock both handles in their exact opposite directions, meaning no matter what, the curve will always be smoothed at the keyframe's center. And lastly, we have the free handle type. This lets you move and manipulate both handlebars independently. With this information now, you can create some insane animations simply by implementing a few curves and experimenting with the different options in the interpolation menu. I've linked a great resource below that shows you all the different types of curves and how they affect your animations. So we have a decent understanding of this magic line now and how it affects and transforms our animations. But there's one massive problem I see a lot of people make when they're finalizing their animations. And to fix that, you'll want to watch this video right here.